Okay, so today's video is all about drugstore makeup. I'm sure your subscription feed has been flooded with Sephora videos over the last few weeks. I know that I filmed my own, and as much as I love chatting about higher-end favorites, drugstore is where it's at for me. I love affordable makeup, I love affordable products, and there have been a ton of really good affordable launches in 2024, but also some bad ones, some that didn't work out for me. So in today's video, I wanted to update you on 15 different makeup products I've been testing out over the last few weeks. Weirdly enough, it just worked out that these are split into three even categories. So I have five makeup products that did not work out for me. Some of them are bad quality products I don't recommend to anyone, and some just didn't work because of personal preference, but they could work for you. So I'll be sure to differentiate. I also have five products that I really like, but they aren't so good that they're going to become like absolute holy grails for me. They're just, they're nice options. And then five are amazing. I haven't been able to stop using them. They've definitely worked their way into my daily makeup routine. So I think I'll start at the bottom with my least favorite and work my way up to the top. I did film two different videos trying out these products. So if you want to see how they apply, what they look like, that entire process, I'll link those videos in the description box. But I wanted to come back and share some updates now that it's been a few weeks. So kicking it off with a few products that I just don't recommend spending your money on. I actually had really high hopes for this product and when I initially tried it out in my video where I was testing out new makeup, I was like, I love this. It's going to be my go-to. It's my favorite. It is the LA Girl Brow Ink Micro Brush Detailer Pen. This product applies really, really well. The thing that sets this apart from other brow pens out there is the fact that the applicator is really thin, very, very tapered. So when you're creating you know, the appearance of hair on your brows, you're going to get a really realistic look, whereas other brow pens can sometimes come off a little bit too bold. This one is really fine, so I found that it was perfect for the front of my brows where I just don't have any hair. That sounds great, right? The issue is that this didn't last really more than a few uses before it pretty much completely dried out, and it's just really impossible to justify a brow pen that won't last for more than a couple weeks. For me, I think it only really lasted maybe one or two, and then it it kind of like looked really streaky and then it pretty much just fully dried out. So for that reason, I really don't recommend picking this up. When I looked online, this actually came with about half the amount of product as the NYX Brow Pen. And the NYX Brow Pen is more expensive. That one is 13, this one is eight, but the NYX Brow Pen lasts me months. So I do think that part of the reason why this dried out must be some sort of either like packaging issue or there must be some mechanism within the pen that just doesn't allow all of the product to go through to the tips. Another con, it only has two shades. The NYX Brow Pen comes in significantly more options. So I don't recommend trying this one, even though it does apply really beautifully. I just can't justify the price. Like even though it's affordable at $8, spending $8 every few weeks is going to add up really, really quickly. So I'll just stick with NYX for now. Milani also makes a great option. I wouldn't pick this up. Another product I just don't recommend spending your money on is this product from Flower Beauty. These are the Cream and Chrome Eyeliner Duos. So they actually have some really beautiful duos. This blue and silver one is so gorgeous. And initially the product does apply well. Well, let me clarify. It doesn't apply well to the waterline. So if you are looking for like a creamy waterline pencil, this isn't it. But if you like to line your upper lash line with like a traditional wooden pencil eyeliner, it does go on nicely. I'm actually wearing the dark brown one on my eyes today. And then I set it with a little bit of eyeshadow. So I have the shade Rich Brown on my eyes just to kind of create that wing and definition. And then I do have the bronzy side on my waterline, Rose Gold, but you can't really even see it. It just doesn't apply well to the waterline. The issue with these, on top of the fact that they don't apply well on the waterline, is the fact that they don't last at all. I'll show you when I do some swatches. I'll swatch them on my hand, let them dry for a little while, but as you can see, they smear off with just like a light touch. There are so many other good drugstore eyeliners that are actually less expensive. I love Flower Beauty, but this product was definitely a fail. Okay, the last product that I really truly think is just a poor quality product that I wouldn't recommend spending your money on is this one from ColourPop. It is the So Elemental Eyeshadow Palette. Let me say, this palette definitely swatches better than it applies to the eyes. So don't let the swatches fool you because they look really, really good. And I think that you can definitely get some of the shades to look good on the eyes, especially like the shimmers, the metallics. If you use more of like a creamy base, if you go in with like a little bit of concealer or you have a tacky eyeshadow primer, 
primer, they will appear a little bit more vibrant. But overall, I just didn't find this palette to be really high quality, especially compared to some of the old school ColourPop palettes that I love. The matte shadows are definitely pretty patchy. If you want to see the video where I used it, I was able to kind of get the look to come together in the end. So I won't say it's like the worst palette that has ever existed, but again, the quality is just lacking. My favorite shadow is definitely this one, which is a little bit of a newer formula for them, but it kind of has a little bit of like a creamy metallic texture with a touch of tackiness. Like it's almost like a pressed glitter mixed with a super shock mixed with a metallic. So it looks really sparkly, super intense on the eyes. It does crease and it does fade by the end of the day and there is some fallout as well. So initially in that video, I loved it, but as I kind of wore it more and more, it definitely wasn't my favorite. I'm wearing a super shock on the eyes today and I feel like the super shock shadows give you the look of like a sparkly shadow, but for me they do wear really well. So I just wouldn't recommend picking this up. I think the color story is really pretty. It's kind of like a muted cooler toned blue palette. It's not as vibrant as like the blue moon palette, which can be a little bit intimidating if you don't wear a ton of color on your eyes. So I like that this one's a little bit more approachable. I don't think I'm going to get rid of this palette right now because I do love the color story. So as I use like other palettes. Sometimes there's a shade in here that I find pretty complimentary that I probably will use in my look, but I wouldn't really recommend spending your money on it. Because I have it, I will use it, but if I lost it or, you know, it shattered, I would not go out and repurchase it. I just don't think it's worth the money. Actually, this product would kind of fall in the same category as products that I just don't recommend spending your money on. I don't think these are quite as bad in terms of quality as the other products, but there are better options out there. So this is from the Ulta Beauty Collection. These are the Plumped Up Pout Lip Balms. So every once in a while, I kind of go through the Ulta Beauty Collection products to see what I haven't tried, and they they have so many products that there are quite a few that I haven't tried. I actually just purchased one of their cream blushes during the Ulta Spring Hall event, which I think is still going on. They have a ton of products on sale. I think probably some of the products I'm sharing in today's video. So if you want to check out the sale, I'll link that page below. I did do a video sharing my top recommendations. If you're interested, I'll link that video below too. So these are on sale right now, but I wouldn't recommend grabbing them. I think the packaging is super cute. These swatch better than they apply, which I feel like is kind of a common theme in today's video. These are basically like sheer, slightly tinted lip balms. They feel nice initially, like they definitely have a nice moisturizing feel, a little bit of a cooling sensation, but I wouldn't say they actually plump up the lips. And they look a little bit glossy, but I guess more so balmy, like a little bit more natural overall. The issue for me is they wear off so fast, like within 20 minutes, my lips feel so dry and they actually feel less moisturized than they did before I put this product on. So it does dry out my lips and I don't know why. It's probably whatever ingredient they use to create that cooling sensation, it ends up being drying. I guess you could end up reapplying them to get that moisture back, but they don't really look that great after like the first 20 minutes. They kind of start to settle into fine lines. You use that or you lose that glossy finish. I'll try to link some alternatives for the products I don't recommend in the description box below, just in case you want something that's similar but better. Okay, this next product, I guess, is kind of on the line between products that didn't work for me and products I like. It is the CoverGirl Simply Ages Ageless Skin Perfector Essence. I want to love this so badly because it looks amazing on my skin when I initially apply it. It is so natural, incredibly moisturizing. It looks really, really healthy, like the most skin-like product I've tried in a really long time. It's very natural, very fresh, so lightweight. Like I definitely understand why a lot of people have said like this is their go-to product for daily wear. My issue is it doesn't last on my skin. I do have oily skin and I feel like by the end of the day, it just, it breaks down, it wears off, my skin gets oily. I would say that I probably get like a good solid four hours out of this product before it starts to look really oily. And then around six hours, like it is just a mess on my skin. I almost feel like this could be really ideal for me during the fall and the winter when my skin leans more dry. But I don't know, if you have oily skin, how do you like this product? Does it last on your skin? I feel like I've tried everything. Like I will use a setting spray. I'll use a gripping primer. If I set it with a ton of powder, I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose because it takes away like that beautiful, natural, glowy finish. So I don't know. I feel like, you know, I keep trying it, wanting to fall in love with it. But by the end of the day, not even the end of the day, by like 
four to six hours later, my skin just doesn't look good. A few other cons, it is expensive. It's over $20, which is a lot for a drugstore product, but it does look beautiful on the skin. So that could be worth it to you. It is currently on sale on Ulta's website, I think for around $12, which is like the lowest I've seen it. So if you do want to try it, I recommend grabbing it now. I will say that it runs a little bit light. I have the shade 20 light and that is definitely too light for me. So I'll probably go up to light medium if I do purchase another shade. But the reason the reason I haven't picked it up in another shade yet is because like I said, it just doesn't last on my skin. So for that reason, I just don't see myself using it a lot over the next few months when my skin is very, very oily. All of that being said, I don't think this is a bad product. I definitely understand why people love it. I think the formula is so gorgeous. It's really high quality. It's just, it comes down to personal preference and my skin type with this one. So this could absolutely work for you. And I do think it is worth the hype. It's just a matter of whether or not it's actually going to last on your skin. Okay, so the next five products are products I like. They aren't necessarily going to become my number one in that category. There are other alternatives I tend to reach for a little bit more, but I do think the quality is there. So it just kind of depends on if this is something that you feel like you need in your personal collection. Okay, so kicking it off with three different lip products. These are from e.l.f. They are the Pout Clout Lip Plumping Pen. I feel like I have a lot of thoughts about this product. I know it was going viral a little while ago because some people were giving it like a super negative review and then other people we're loving it. I'm kind of in the middle. I feel like it has some pros and it has some cons. It's a little bit different than I thought it was going to be. I think everyone automatically assumes that a ClickUp type of lip a click up type of lip product is going to be a dupe for the Tarte Barracuda Juicy Lips. This is definitely different than the Tarte lip product. The Tarte lip products to me are very hydrating. They're super glossy, really shiny, very, very pretty, but not necessarily the most long lasting. Like I feel like I have to reapply those fairly often as I'm wearing them. This product definitely feels less moisturizing. It has a little bit more of a lipstick feel compared to the Tarte lip product, which is more of like a true balmy gloss. These have like that glossy moisturizing finish, but I feel like it doesn't feel quite as moisturizing as the Tarte Lip product. I do really like these. So I have three shades. They're all in like the lighter nude range. So on me, I feel like they do look a little bit streaky if I'm not wearing a lip liner underneath. I don't know if that's the case for all of them. I know they have like a lot of vibrant shades, some deeper shades. So if you've tried those, I would love to hear what you think. I kind of want to grab a berry because I've seen some videos of people using it and that looks really pretty on its own. So I do always pair these with a lip liner, but I will say they last on the lips pretty well. They're definitely thicker than the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips and they have like not a tackiness to them, but more of a lipstick feel. So they're not going to completely wear off or move around on the lips as you're using them. If you apply too much of this, it can look like a little bit gloopy, like as you press your lips together, you will get that stringy look. So I feel like less is more with this product and then you can even just blend it in with your finger. That's why I recommend using them with a lip liner because they do tend to look a little bit streaky, but I feel like you get more of that smooth, even look as you blend them in. I'm wearing a mix of two shades, so I mainly have toasted all over my lips, and then I have a little bit of the shade Just Peachy on top, and then I do have a gloss over them because sometimes as they wear off, I feel like they, they're not dry, but I want like that true glossy finish. So I'll just kind of top them with a gloss. So for me, I feel like I tend to reach for these when I want basically a sheer moisturizing lipstick. If I don't want like a true cream or matte lipstick that has a ton of pigment, these are a really good alternative because they feel like a lipstick. They almost wear like a lipstick, but they're a little bit shinier and a little bit more comfortable than a lot of other lipstick formulas I've tried. Definitely not a tart dupe, but I feel like there is a place for this in my collection. One thing I wanna mention is these do have a little bit of like a strange scent and taste and I can't really place it. What would you describe it as if you've tried these? It's not so bad that I wouldn't wear them, but it is noticeable and it's not like a fun fruity scent or like a vanilla scent. It's just a little bit weird. So the other lip product that I have on top is just a small amount of this gloss from Flower Beauty. It's their Gloss Crush Lip Serum. I'm wearing the shade Bronze Crush. I've talked about these a little bit on my channel. They're just, they're underwhelming, but I keep reaching for them, which is why they're in this category. Like for some reason, I want to wear them. They're kind of like a little bit of a mediocre lip oil. Like they definitely have a moisturizing feel. They're not incredibly glossy. They have more of a balmy finish. So they look a little bit more natural on the lips. But I feel like if you pair them with something that's already moisturizing, like the e.l.f. lipstick, 
it just kind of enhances it in a very subtle way. One reason why I like these is because my lips do feel moisturized once they wear off, even if they're not incredibly long wearing. So sometimes when I'm running out the door, if I don't want to wear like something really vibrant on my lips, I'll grab one of these because they feel nice. And even if they wear off quickly, I'll just throw it back on. So if you have a lot of lip gloss in your collection, a lot of formulas you love, I wouldn't recommend running out and buying these. Again, if I lost these, I wouldn't replace them because they're not really anything super special. I just just feel kind of underwhelmed, but they're kind of like a nice, easy go-to lip product at the same time. Hard Candy launched some new lip oils, and I did try the original lip oils last year when they launched them, and I liked the formula, but I didn't like the scent. They just smelled and tasted really terrible in my opinion. So they did a limited edition Girl Scouts collab, and they did a few like cookie-flavored lip oils. They have a Thin Mints one as well. These actually smell like cookies. They don't taste like anything which I actually prefer, but I'm really glad they came out with these because I do think this is a nice lip oil formula. It's definitely not my number one because I do tend to prefer something a little bit thicker and something a little bit longer lasting. This is like a very thin, everyday, simple lip oil that you'll probably have to reapply multiple times throughout the day. But if you like that type of formula, this is a really great option and they come in fun scents. They are clear, so you don't need all of them. I would just choose the one that you like best based on the scent, but I just wanted to update you on these because these are definitely better than the original launch. Two more products in this category. These are the Flower Beauty Ultra Light Liquid Blushes. This was my most anticipated drugstore launch. Like ever since they launched the liquid highlighters and then eventually they did the liquid contours and then finally they did these. Like I've been waiting for them ever since they did the highlighters is what I was saying. And these are good. They really are. But I thought they were going to be glowy just because the liquid highlighters pretty much duped the Charlotte Tilbury glow wands. And then Charlotte Tilbury's blush tones are really, really glowy. But these lean more not like fully matte. They have more of a natural finish to them. I don't know, like there really is no pearl. There's no shimmer in these, which is what I really, really wanted. Obviously you can create that on your own by mixing it with the liquid highlighter. These are really pigmented, like a little bit goes such a long way. And I tend to prefer something a little bit more sheer, but I like the fact that they are pigmented because you can obviously build them up if that's something you're going for or sheer them out by just using less product. And they are incredibly long lasting. Like these do not move. By the end of a 12 hour day, these are still locked into place on my skin. For such a pigmented product that does dry down to more of a natural finish, I will say that they're fairly easy to blend out, but they dry down quickly. Like the way that I've heard a lot of people describe the liquid contour. So you have to work fast and as long as you can blend them out quickly, you won't be disappointed. I do think they are worth trying. I won't say they're my favorite. Like when I think of a liquid blush, I usually prefer something that has more of a satin, even slightly glowy finish. I feel like the e.l.f. liquid blushes look a little bit better on my skin than these do. And they are, in my opinion, like a little bit easier to sheer out or build up where these are are just so intense that I usually end up going a little bit overboard. But if you like more pigment and you want like a true long lasting finish, I think you'll love these. I just, I wish they had a little bit of a glow to them. The last product in this category is from NYX. It's their new blur screen, which is their Blurring Primer SPF 30 sunscreen. I do like this product. It's a really nice all-in-one. It gives your skin a beautiful, smooth finish with a little bit of a glow, and then you also protect your skin with the SPF 30. Now you have to make sure you're applying enough to get like the full sun protection, really realistically, I'll just end up wearing like my normal sunscreens under this. But if you're in a hurry, if you feel like you're being honest with yourself and you're just not someone who will typically apply sunscreen, this is a really good product to try because it makes it easy to work sunscreen into your routine. It doesn't have like that typical sunscreen scent. It's kind of beachy, like a little bit coconutty. So it does smell really good. It gives your skin a gorgeous smooth finish. And like I said, a little bit of a glow without being over the top. As a primer, this product works great. Like my foundation goes on so nicely. My skin definitely has an obvious blur. It it looks really smooth and even, and I love the way everything looks. It doesn't extend the wear of my makeup because it is a little bit of a glowy product. I feel like my foundation can wear off 
you know, slightly faster than if I'm using a gripping primer or a mattifying primer. But if you're not someone who deals with oily skin, that might not be an issue for you. This is really great when I'm in a hurry and I just want like a quick all-in-one base. I think it might be my go-to more so in like the fall and the winter when my skin is slightly more on the dry side. But I do really love this. I think it is a great option. Okay, so moving on to the last category. These are products I absolutely love. I've been wearing them nonstop since I initially tried them and they're definitely going to be some of my top makeup products of the year. Let's start with two different complexion products from Catrice. Catrice makes pretty much all of my favorite foundations, so I was really excited to try this one out. It is the New Drop Tinted Serum Foundation. I thought this was going to be basically like a tinted serum. So with that in mind, I thought it was going to be a really light coverage, super natural on the skin, and I don't exactly find that to be the case. In my opinion, this is more like a medium coverage foundation. Honestly, I really love this, but I don't think it's going to be for everyone. If you are looking for like a true serum or like a true skin tint, this will probably leave you feeling a little bit disappointed. If you go into it knowing that it is more of a natural looking, natural feeling medium coverage foundation, I think you'll like it. It is very, very thin. Like it does feel like a serum as you're applying it to the skin and it blends out so beautifully, very quickly, very easily. You can use your fingers or a brush or a sponge. If you use a sponge, you'll get a little bit more of a natural coverage look, but I like the fact that you can build it up to look a little bit more full coverage if that's what you're going for. I do have it on my skin today. My skin does get a little bit oily with this product, which is why I like powdered my face halfway through filming this but I don't really mind because I do feel like it looks really natural, very healthy, super pretty. I will say it's not quite as moisturizing as I assumed it would be because of the name. So if you have really dry skin, I don't think you'll like this because I have a little bit of dryness around my nose and sometimes I have that around my chin too and this will cling to those areas so much. So I definitely go in with more of a moisturizing primer when I'm reaching for this compared to something super mattifying because even though it has a little bit of a glow to it, it can feel a little dry. It's not necessarily the most long lasting on my skin, like the HD foundation and their True Skin foundation definitely lasts longer, but I would say I could get like a good eight hours out of this product and I just, I like the way it feels. It's super lightweight, it feels breathable, it looks really good, very healthy, it's a little bit more natural than their other foundations. So I personally love it. I will say because it's not quite as sheer as I thought it was going to be, I think they need more shades. They have 16, but their other foundations have between like 20 and 24. And if it was like a true tinted serum, 16 might be enough because it would be a little bit more adaptable. But because it is like a medium coverage foundation, I think they need to expand the shade range. So definitely something I wanted to point out. Catrice also launched this soft glam filter fluid, which looks very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Finish or really even the e.l.f. halo glow. Like that's what I thought it would be a dupe for because it looks identical to that. It is very, very similar to the e.l.f. product. Like if I was wearing them side by side, there wouldn't be a major difference. I would say the first thing that comes to, comes to mind is that the e.l.f. halo glow has like a little bit more coverage. And I know some people like to use that as like their base product or as their foundation. I don't think it would be quite as easy to do that with the Catrice one because it's more on the sheer side. But I actually prefer that because I use this product to mix into things. So I'll use it as like a mix into a foundation or maybe my moisturizer. You could also use it as a liquid highlighter. They're similar enough that I don't think you need both formulas. It just kind of depends on which one you prefer. Catrice is a little bit less expensive at $10. Elf is $14. But I know a lot of you live in areas where Elf is a lot more expensive. Like if you don't live in the US, Elf might not be as accessible or as inexpensive as it is here. So if Catrice is more easily accessible for you, I recommend going with this because you'll get very, very similar results. Catrice does have, I think, nine shades. I just double checked. So Catrice does have nine shades. Elf has 12, so something to take into consideration as well, but they're very similar. If you want like a beautiful glowy product you can use as a primer or a mix-in or a liquid highlighter, this is a really good option. If you already have Elf, I would say skip it because you probably don't need both formulas. Finish 
finishing up with my last three in no particular order, I love all of these products so much. The Essence Lash Without Limits Extreme Lengthening and Volume Mascara. I was like instantly wowed by this mascara. It looks so good on the lashes. It is really dramatic, but you could probably go in with like one or two light layers if you want something a little bit softer. I'm wearing it today and you can also build it up to look really dramatic and really long. It gives you good volume, really good length. It is super intense. I have the black one, but it also comes in brown, which I do plan on trying. In my opinion, this is very similar to the Lash Princess, but I like it better. That one can get a little bit clumpy on me personally, whereas this one usually looks pretty good, like it does separate while also adding length and volume. It doesn't flake, it doesn't smudge for me personally, but I feel like I don't get any flaking or smudging from the Lash Princess either, so you'll have to let me know if you've tried this. I will say it's a little bit of a heavier formula because it is a very wet formula, so it might have a tendency to weigh your lashes down. I don't feel like it weighs mine down too much, but it's probably not quite as lifting as a few other formulas I've tried. But I absolutely love this. It does feel like a high-end formula to me, but it's Essence, so it's like $5. It's an amazing option. Actually, I have another product from Essence. This is their Hydra Kiss Lip Oil. I actually want to grab the other two shades, but I think this one will probably still be my favorite. It only comes in three options, but I'm so glad I bought this. I initially wasn't even going to try it because at this point, there are just so many lip oils out there. I was like, I don't need it. I'm kind of over lip oils. This one changed my mind. Like, I have to have this with me when I leave the house. It truly feels like a high-end lip oil. It has the most amazing, just like cushiony texture. It's not too runny. It's not too thick. It stays in place well. It's very moisturizing. It has like the perfect tint of color. I really don't have any complaints about this product. I love the applicator. I don't think it has a scent. I have a cold right now, so I can't smell anything, but I don't remember there being any sort of noticeable scent. It does come in like a lighter pink and then also an orangey tone, but I think this one probably has the most tint out of all three, and it just gives your lips a beautiful just like hint of color. So I feel like I can safely say like this is my favorite lip oil at the drugstore, or really of all time. I mean, I've been using it for a few weeks at this point, but I don't even want to use any other lip oil. Like I love this one so, so much. Okay, the last product that I want to talk about is the NYX Buttermelt Bronzer. I am wearing this today. Which one do I have on? I have Deserve Butter, which is the light medium neutral. I do prefer this shade compared to the other one I got. I also got Buttered Up, which is light medium warm. I feel like this one... I don't know, it pulls a little bit orangey on me. So I thought these were going to be more rosy, more red toned than they actually are because the swatches online look a lot different than these actually appear on the skin. I just feel like the photographs are a little bit off. So I would either recommend looking up swatches or maybe buying them in person if you can. Although I don't know if they would have testers out at Ulta and these are all sealed. It's not like you can really see the color in person before buying. I don't think. I haven't been to Ulta in a little while. I haven't, I haven't actually seen these in person. So I would maybe just go based on swatches. Anyway, this formula is so smooth, so buttery, really gorgeous on the skin. These are highly pigmented. Like a little bit goes an extremely long way. Even today, I still applied too much and then had to go in and kind of tone it down. And I've used these like at least 10 times at this point. So I always forget how pigmented they are, but you really don't need a lot. They do have a little bit of a coconut scent to them. Again, I have a cold although I can smell these even with my cold, so I feel like maybe it's a little bit more intense than I remember. I like that. I feel like it's very beachy, very summery, but something to note. I've heard people say these are really, really glowy, and on my skin, they have like a natural, soft, almost satin finish, but they're definitely not super glowy, not shimmery at all. I will say, I've heard a lot of people describe these as glowy, and I don't see it. Like on my skin, it does have like a soft, almost satin finish that looks so pretty, almost similar to what I would get from like an hourglass powder where it's not like a shimmer or a pearl. It's like this beautiful, diffused, like light reflecting quality. That's what I feel like this looks like on the skin. So I don't know. I feel like maybe it does vary depending on like which batch it is. I will say I've seen some people on TikTok say that theirs came shattered and then they pressed it back together. And then when they apply it to the skin, it's super glowy. So that might have something to do with it too. But on me, they're definitely not over the top. They're just, they're so pretty, very naturally glowy, like in a healthy way. Definitely one of the best powder drugstore bronzers in my opinion 
opinion, it's probably my number one right now. I've been wearing a lot of powder bronzer, but this makes me want to wear powder bronzer because it looks so good on the skin. So I have it on today. I love it. I do recommend trying them. Just be careful if you can maybe buy them in person because like I said, I've heard people say they come shattered when they order them online because it is such a soft formula. Okay, I just have a feeling this was a long video. So I'm going to go through an editing and try to cut out like any rambling. This was supposed to be a speed reviews type of video, but when I'm filming reviews, like I wanna share all the pros, all the cons, so you can make up your mind as to whether or not you think the product would work for you. So I hope today's video was helpful. If you like drugstore content, I'll link a couple of other related videos in the description and on the screen for you. And I'll be back very soon with a new video. Bye.